ஹேவ் யூவர்ஸ் ஒன்ஸ் அகேன் ஏ வாம் வெல்கம் டு மை யூடியூப் சேனல் ஃப்யூச்சர் மிட் வைஃப் டுடேஸ் அவர் டாபிக் இஸ் எக்லாம்ஷியம் In the last class, I have taken about the hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Among that category, pre-eclampsia and eclampsia are the main topic. Those who are not watched that video, please watch that video first. So, without wasting time, today we will continue with eclampsia and its management. First of all, we will start with the definition. Eclampsia is an acute and life-threatening complication during pregnancy. Usually in patient who has developed pre-eclampsia characterized by hypertension, edema, proteinuria involving convulsion and coma is called eclampsia. Here we will see about the types of eclampsia. According to the pregnancy duration, we can categorize into three. Around 50 percentage of cases, eclampsia can be occurs in antepartum, period around 30 percentage of cases can be developed during intrapartum period and the 20 percentage of eclampsia can be seen in postpartum period usually it occurs within 48 hours next we'll see about the pathophysiology of eclampsia so when we discuss about the definition in that it is understood it is a multi system disorder this multi system disorder can lead to hypertension proteinuria edema oliguria at last there will be seizure and coma so we'll see how it happens first there will be a imbalance in prostaglandin ratio so once there is imbalance in prostaglandin ratio it can lead to placental vaso construction so this placental vaso construction automatically lead to reduced placental perfusion whenever there is a reduced placental perfusion it release thromboplastin so this will affect our renal glomerular filtration rate finally lead to protein urea whenever there is reduced placental perfusion it automatically release renin this renin will be converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin so automatically the vaso construction will occurs it can lead to hypertension headache visual disturbances cerebral arrhythmias cerebral irritation finally it will lead to seizure and coma at the same time whenever the angiotensin 1 converted to angiotensin 2 the adrenal hormone also release such as aldosterone this aldosterone whenever there is increased production of aldosterone it automatically reabsorb the sodium finally it lead to edema and oliguria this is about the pathophysiology of eclampsia next we will see the clinical manifestation of eclampsia the main clinical manifestation is eclamptic fit it occurs in four stage we will see the first stage that is premonitory stage in this stage the head may be drawn into one side with a rolling of eyes twitching of hands and face loss of consciousness and it lasts for around 30 second the second stage is tonic stage entire body become rigid arms are flexed hands are clenched legs are inverted face is distorted tongue protrudes between the teeth also breath hold with cyanosis which lasts for 30 second the third stage is clonic stage all the muscles of the body including facial muscles contract and relax alternatively in a rapid succession jaws and eyelids begin to open and close violently tongue bite may occurs blood stained frothy secretions come out from mouth and nose cyanosis gradually pass off face and eyes are congested which lasts for 1 to 3 minutes here we reach the last stage that is coma stage which will be there for only a short period temperature pulse respiration and bp will be raised in this stage patient regain consciousness but she is in confused stage she doesn't know what it happened previously next we will discuss about the investigations the main investigations include complete blood count hematocrit value platelet count serum urine acid test lft non stress test serum creatinine level estimation cardiotocography 
Also, we can suggest USG ophthalmoscopy and urine test for proteinuria. Here we reach the management aspect of eclampsia. In that we will see what all are the first aid we can provide whenever there is any eclampsia. The first one is provide safe place. Lying on firm and hard surface. Turn the patient head to one side in order to prevent the aspiration. So ventilation can be provided by loosing the cloth. After that immediately we have to hospitalize the mother. In the hospital, we have to place the mother in a railed coat in an isolated place. After that, we have to maintain the airway by inserting oropharyngeal airway. Then we have to administer oxygen that is 8 to 10 liter per minute. After that, we have to take detailed history from relatives. Next, we need to properly sedate the patient and we have to go for a quick examination. Catheterize the patient in order to identify the proteinuria as well as the urine amount. Every half an hour we have to check the temperature, pulse, BP, urine concentration and fetal heart rate. Every hour we have to monitor the urine output. Maintain fluid balance with the CVP monitoring. Administer antibiotic. Next is very important we have to administer anti-convalescent and sedative. The main drug of choice is magnesium sulfate. Before administering the magnesium sulfate we have to follow some criteria in that the respiratory rate should be more than 12 breath per minute. Then we have to check the knee jerk reflex if it is present or not. Then we have to see the urine output it should be 30 ml per hour. If all these are okay we can go for magnesium sulfate administration that is we have to start with the 4 gram intravenously remaining 10 gram intramuscularly 5 mg in each buttocks. In some hospital we are not practicing the intramuscular administration we directly go for the intravenous administration. Apart from that, we have to give a lytic cocktail therapy with the combination of pethidine and phenargan. Next one is antihypertensive medication. In that, the drug of choices are labitalol, methyl dopa and ACE inhibitors. Then the antibiotic therapy also we can administer. Here we raise the obstacle management. This can be divided into four stages. We will see the first stage. The first stage means fits are controlled. Duration of pregnancy is over 37 weeks. In that case, induction can be performed if the cervix is favorable. If the cervix is not favorable, we can go for cesarean section. In the second stage means fits are controlled but baby is immature. In this case, we can continue the pregnancy until the fetus get maturity. In the third stage, fits are uncontrolled. There is no sign of labor process means first we have to stabilize the mother. Then the BP should be within the normal range. Then only we can conduct the delivery. In the fourth stage means labor is already started. In that condition, we can go for artificial rupture of membrane and we can conduct the labor by means of forceps and vacuum. If all conditions are unfavorable, we can directly go for cesarean section. Here we can wind up our today's section. In this video, I explained about definition of eclampsia, pathophysiology of eclampsia, different stages of eclamptic fit and management. The nursing management will be displayed on the slide. Please have a look on it. So, in the next class, we will meet with an another episode of midwifery topic. Till that, take care. Bye-bye.